Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I hope you all are having a, a good, blessed day. Yes. Well, I'm going to let my husband go on ahead and get the word that God has laid on his heart for today. Go ahead. Man. Praise God. Praise God. This is uh, another beautiful day that God had made. Rejoice and be glad. And be, like my wife just took it out of my mouth. To be, <laughs> to be, rejoice and be glad. Mm -hmm. Um, go ahead and give me some things last night. I was going back and forth, you no, know, and finally finished it up with me that today when when I got along to myself again, and it blessed me and it had me to really sit down and examine myself. I was sharing with my wife, and God is going to bring everything out into the open. He that have ears, let us hear what the Spirit of God is telling us. So at this time, can we bow our head down for prayer? Heavenly Father God, we call upon you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you just come down. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you just use me and my wife, Lord. Father God, Lord, we put you first, Lord. You said, Lord, that if you be lifted, that you that you would draw all men unto you. Heavenly Father God, it's not our will, but your will, Lord. Your will be done. Father God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that the word of God have free course. They may fall upon good grounds, Lord. We claim that saved the souls be saved. Father God, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen and amen. Uh, this is something that God have been pressing towards my heart. And if you have a pen and paper, you might want to write some of these notes. Because, again, he had me to write. <laughs> and, and I will be going from the Bible. First chapter will be 2 Corinthians. The 10th chapter, starting from the third verse. And we going to name this here, God's Mighty weapons God mighty weapons and say starting at the third verse of 10, 10 chapter 10 chapter third verse say for though we walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh. <laughs> and explaining something we are engaged in a spiritual warfare. Four verses for the weapons of our warfare are not carnally, but mighty through God, to pulling down the stronghold, casting down the imagination and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the to the obedience of Christ. Again. <clears throat> As I read to you what he gave me on that. He said, in other words, if we are a Christian or a believer, we are engaging in warfare. The field is in our mind. Not a bas not a basketball court, not a baseball court, but in our mind. This is the battlefield, our mind.
And he also he also had me to read that they are not cornered, but they are mighty to God to pull down strongholds. The weapon that God gave us. They are new weapons. See, these weapons they will pull down strongholds of the devil. They are spiritual weapons. The word of God and prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit. Then Paul say, we are casting down imagination and everything, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to obedience of Christ. See, he, Paul was telling the Corinthians, Paul is telling us within his word. The Holy Spirit is telling us within his word. The weapons that God gave us, again, to pull these strong imagination down and these strongholds down is, again, the word of God, prayer, and the Holy Spirit. He said these things that will pull them down. He say, he say, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience. Okay. A person who is living in the spirit, every thought he has should be to the obedience of Christ. Okay, the power of thought. Now, thought are powerful to harm us, a powerful to help us. But the Bible says, so a man think it, so is he. So then our thoughts, we could, we could let our thoughts help us, or we could let our thought harm us. And this is what Paul is trying to get across. Not only to the Corinthians, but also to us. Because this is the battlefield, our mind, within our head. And as we go down, God is going to continue to show us and to let us see ourselves in the mirror. He that have ears, let us hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us today. Okay. Let's ask ourselves how do we think? What go through our minds? What do we think when we are alone? Who control our mind? These are some things that I was led to write and to ask myself and to ask y'all as well to get y'all to think. And let's be for real with ourselves. Let us know again, how do we think? What go through your mind? What do you think about when you are alone? Well, who going to control your mind? Let's look at Proverbs 16. And 32. He that is slow. Again, let me make sure. Proverbs 16 and 32 say. They would say, he that is slow to anger is better than 
the mighty, and he that rule his spirit, then he that taketh a city. 32 verse say again, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules rule his spirit, then he that taketh a city. And this is what he had for this year. He that rule his mind is greater than he that taketh the city. That means to rule the thoughts of your mind. So who or who our mind is our own company. Again, this is what he had me to write. And the minute I'm gonna explain it to you. He said that he that rule his mind is greater than he that taketh the city. He said, that's mean to rule the thoughts of your mind. So our mind is over. Is he said, so our mind is our own only company. What do you talk? To your mind about that our own company is in our is in your mind is in our mind. So that when you're alone, who are you talking to? You say what you talking to your mind about? In the book of Isaiah, he say, "Thou will keep him." In perfect peace, who mind is stayed on him. This is Isaiah. Our mind. Our mind. He say, he say, I will keep him in perfect peace, who mind stays upon me, stays upon him. Ask ourselves. Do we keep our minds on Christ? Come on. This was this is almost what you call that thing that I used to say? Uh, the, uh with the uh the olive oil and the natural salt. The other salt that there's another name. Uh it's when you clean this is a cleanser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be real with yourself. He said, I read it to you again. Ask ourselves, do we keep our mind on Christ? Or do you have your mind off Christ? And we get on something we shouldn't be thinking about. Do we pray for God for forgiveness? And to help us to get our mind back on Christ? Or do we just lay down and sin? Don't want it. As we go, the Holy Spirit will show us. <clears throat> this is what the Spirit of the Lord says. He that have ears to hear, let us hear what the Spirit say. The mind, he say, the mind of our mind is, in, is an enmity against God. Your mind does not want to do anything about God to start within. Romans 8 and 7. Let's turn to the book of Romans 8 and 7. <clears throat> because the corner mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Paul wrote to the Colossians that until they had come to the world, they was alienated, alienated enemies alienated. in their mind, enemies of God, denied from God, Separated from God, 
in your mind, you will part of or to see such a mind will not obey the law. It's subject. You see, this when we in the flesh, our mind will not obey the law of God. Because it's subject to sin. It won't have sin. And this is what Paul is trying to get us to see. It wants to sin. It don't want to submit to the things of God. It don't want to submit to do what God say. This kind of calling and mining that is the memory by it is dominion by the devil or by selfish. This is selfish, selfishness. And then the mind is not only intimate with God, 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 but it also a blinded mind. The God of this world wants to blind our mind to the things of God. It do not want us to live what God's word say. It will, it want us to do different. I give you a good example. God say don't do. And then, and then when God tells us don't do, we still find ourselves going out there and doing it anyway. Because that it does not want to listen to what to what the word say. It does not want to listen to what the spiritual man is, is, is being is being said. It want to do what it want to do. And many of us today that we wonder why that we can get to that next level because that there is a battle in our in our mind and when when we are believers if you are a believer or if you are a Christian we are going through this battle it's a constant battle within our mind and then if a person say that I don't have a battle the devil a devil the, the devil in him is a lie because when you become a believer and you are a Christian we fight against, we walk against our own selves, the flesh, the our mind. Second Corinthians. Okay, Second Corinthians, I'm trying to go as fast as I can, Second Corinthians 4 and 3, for if our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost. Hmm, that's what Paul tells the Corinthians again, he said, if our gospel be hid, it is here to them that are lost. Okay. For verse in whom the God of this world have blinded the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God shall shine unto them. You see, the devil has power. He has supernatural power to bind the mind. To bind the mind. Yes. To bind the mind. And you know, we let him bind our mind. Yes, we let him bind our minds. When we don't allow ourselves to read and pray and to, and, and, and to ask God to, to let our mind be transformed by, the, by renewing the, of his mind. You see, do we believers 
And why do some of us be in the left field? Because I was blinded by God of this world. We led to captive to the will of Satan and some believe, try to believe, but I cannot. They are blind. Their minds are blind. The only person that can open up your eyes to the truth is the Holy Spirit. And we have to ask Christ to come into our lives. Luke 12 say that Jesus said, neither be ye of double-minded. The Bible warned against a double-minded person. Jesus say a double-minded is unstable in all his ways. This is a person who wants to secure both worlds. She or he wants one foot into heaven and one foot into pleasure. <laughs> Do that sound like many of us out here now? Of this life and just cannot go one way or the other. Many believers are torn between sins of sinful pleasure and appetite and you desire for heaven and you know that you can't have both. We have to make a choice, Jesus said. There are two roads in life. There's a broad road that leads to destruction he said, there's a narrow road that leads to eternal life. And there's a narrow gate that, go, that goes to the cross. He said, we have the mind that are at enmity against God. We have the mind that are blinded by the devil. And we have a double a double, a double fool mind and also the foul mind. Now, this is what Titus was writing to certain people who was always lying. See, this is what the Spirit of God was, uh, is trying to share. See, Paul wrote to Titus of a certain people who always lie. Who are always lying, who mind or defile and unbelief. You see, we can live so long with our imagination and fantasies. We can live so long like that. They are wrong and against the word of God. Teaching spiritual that our mind becomes defiled. And evil thoughts are seducing of our soul. He said, you cannot help bad thoughts coming from your mind. And some of us let evil thoughts nest in our mind. Thoughts of jealousy. Thoughts that lead to anger. Thoughts that lead to the wrong kind of passion. But you can also have a renewed mind. And Romans 12 and 2 say, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And ye can be transformed, transform you and can be changed. And you could be changed this day. Mm. You see, it's good, it's good, it's a good thing to know that all your sins can be forgiven today. Because Christ died upon the cross for us, and He shed his blood for us. But God do not want us to be living in no fantasy world. 
And God do not want us to be living in a world that that we allow the devil to put in us passion of wrong thoughts. And a lot of us, that was a lot of us, that's what the devil have a lot of us living in. Fantasy. A fantasy world. In other words, fantasy island. The devil take many of us to fantasy island. Until we realize that it's only a thought. What did he say in the earlier the word? The, the power of thought could harm us or help us. And many of us, instead of us trying to get help, let thought help us, we really go for the harmful thought and go to fantasy island and live a lie. And this is this is in the battle. This is in the, this is in our mind. Somebody wants to control this mind, and we have a choice to let it. And who's gonna control it? I made up in my mind is that I want God. I, I want I want to have the mind of Christ. So that means that I got to dig into this world. I mean, to this word, I have to constantly uh, pull away from things. I have to constantly get to myself and pray and find out is I'm on the right track with him. This is something that this is something that God was dealing with me on, and it's kind of you no, know, it, no, it's not new, but it, it's that I just you know it, it made me look at myself more, you no. Know, have the devil have have the devil been really taking me to Fantasy Island? No. So that's all I want to share with you. Know that I know that this is the holidays, and the the devil gonna be trying to play with with a whole lot of people's minds out here for during the holidays. But Again, I share with y'all before I leave. God have given us the power to bring anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And what is them tools? The word of God. Prayer. And the Holy Spirit. That's what the that's what's going to defeat and bring anything that any high thing. So when that spirit of depression hits your mind, your whole that Holy Spirit within should be telling, "Oh no, uh uh, I ain't accepting this yet." See, we thank you, Holy Spirit. The reason why that we go through these things because that we allow this to come in us. It's like a computer. Have you ever been on? You talk to somebody on the phone, and and you call this company, and, 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 and you try to take care of your bill, and they done probably took too much money out you, or they done probably put too much money on your bill, and they say that the computer did this. No, the computer didn't do that. The computer only could do what the person behind that is behind that computer is putting in there, and whatever that person is putting in there, that computer is gonna put out. Well, that's the same way with us. The devil only could do what we allow him to come in our mind and our thought to do. You heard what Paul, you heard what Paul, you heard what James say. So is a man, so a man think it, so is he. So is a man think it, so is he. Baby, you have anything you want to say? Well, my wife in there dealing with the little man up in there. And I just want to just share that with y'all there. I pray that it would be a blessing. And, you know, it would have fell up on good ground. I just wanted to share that. And God's mighty weapons. God's mighty weapons. 
could bring down anything that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And it's time for us as believers to start using them weapons. What he give us. Y'all have a blessed day and amen.